July 2022. This is a summer garden tour and update. I'm also going to be talking about the extreme weather we've been having here in Texas. Last week we had a record temperature of 111 degrees. That combined with several consecutive weeks of triple digit temperatures and no rain has really wrecked havoc on my garden. Here you can see some of my strawberry plants, blueberries, one raspberry, two dwarf peach trees. There are some of my tiplary blackberry plants. I'm growing some bell peppers. I have an apple tree I've been growing from seed. This apple tree is about two years old, it's doing all right. It's currently in a five gallon container. There's some more tiplary blackberry plants that didn't make it due to the heat. Here are my compost bins. If you've ever wanted to do composting at home, check out my YouTube channel. I have a video on how to do this and it's super easy and simple to do. This is just a combination of kitchen scraps, shredded paper, and grass clippings. I'm really glad that I started these compost bins. It's made it easy to take compost and add it to the garden this season. Here's the rest of my tip layered blackberry plants. I should have moved this cart over here into the shade weeks ago, but I didn't. So unfortunately I'm gonna lose some of those. Here's two of my peach trees I've grown from seed. Several avocado trees grown from seed. Here's one of my tip layered raspberries. It's had some heat stress, but it's over here in the shade now. I think it's gonna recover. Here's my largest and oldest avocado tree. It's having a difficult time. It's about two years old. It was doing a lot better. It had a lot of the sharpshooter insects on it. I've finally gotten rid of those, so I'm hoping it's gonna recover. There's my dwarf nectarine tree, my orange tree. This is my blackberry row. It's done really well this year. It produced a lot of blackberries. However, it has not been immune to the heat stress. You can see I got a lot of leaf curl and round leaves. Out of all my blackberry plants, the Natchez variety are doing the best in terms of dealing with this heat. I've already removed the second year canes that had fruit and all that's left are the primate canes. Here you can see no brown leaves, no leaf curls, doing pretty well. This one's about ready to be tip layered. I'm also trying some air layering for my blackberry canes this year. I'll be doing a video in the future about that. And I also had a lot more pests than I'd ever had for my blackberry row. I'll be doing a video coming up about the pests that I encountered, what I found, and what I did to control them. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I love propagating blackberries and raspberries. I do a lot of serpentine layering, tip layering, and digging up the suckers. It's just such a fantastic and easy way to share with neighbors and friends so they can start their own garden. This is my strawberry patch. It did really well this year. I planted the Chandler variety. In fact, my favorite part of gardening was taking my kids out here to pick strawberries in the mornings. It's fantastic. However, lack of rain, extreme temperatures. I've lost more than half of my strawberry plants, as you can see there. Thankfully though, I propagated most of the runners into pots, and so I'll be able to repopulate this patch in the spring. On the top, that's just two cattle panels, like an arched trellis, and I covered it with bird netting. It's worked really well. Here's where I'm growing my watermelon. They've had a hard time this year with the lack of rain. I also encountered a new problem I've never had before, and that's having an animal come and eat my watermelon. About three days ago, I had a good-sized watermelon hanging here. I came out two days later, and it was half-eaten. And now all you can see is just this last little part all dried up. I completely understand we're having a drought. I know they're just looking for water and some food so I can share. Here's another one that got eaten. But again, I've got plenty, it's fine. I grow them vertically on the trellis and just make a little hammock. It works really well for me. Last year I planted a muscadine. This is the second year. It's about five and a half feet tall. It's doing really well. It's producing some fruit. 
I'll be doing a separate video on that, so check that out when I post it. But it has just been so hot. You can see the ground cracking everywhere. This is where I'm growing my cantaloupe. They've had a hard time as well. I've only got about 10 growing right now. I like to use these mesh bags for the cantaloupe. I've got a video on how I do this. It's really simple and it works really well on the trellis. So check out that video. That one's got some bite marks on it. Probably gonna lose that one tonight. So here's another one that needs to be put up on the trellis. Earlier you heard me talk about the sharpshooter insects. One thing that has been a little helpful is I'm using these yellow sticky traps. I put this one up a couple of days ago and you can see it's already caught several of the sharpshooter insects. Here's my raspberry row. They have had a particularly difficult time this year. The lack of rain, heat stress, you can see a lot of white leaves, and leaves falling off. I thought about trying to use that top trellis wire to hang some kind of a shade cloth. In fact, do me a favor, if you've ever used a shade cloth, in your garden, please let me know what kind you had, what you used to shade, and how it went. Here are my two apple trees, Fuji on the left, Gala on the right. I'm trying the espalier technique. I have three trellis wires you see right there. Three sections, top, middle, and bottom. I'm just attaching the branches to the trellis wire so the branches grow horizontally along the fence line. Both those trees are about three years old. I'm hoping they produce apples next year or the year after. Here's one of my raised garden beds. That's PVC pipe and bird netting. Out of all the things I'm growing in my garden, the birds attack my strawberries the most. It drives me crazy sometimes. So this has worked out really well. The cups you see is just where I'm propagating the runners directly into those containers. With that 111 degree weather and all these consecutive triple digit temperature days and no rain. You can see I've already lost one, two, three, four, five plants. Over here I tried for the first time growing broccoli and spinach. I think I planted too late in the season. I'm pretty sure a bunch of grasshoppers or some other insect came in. They just mowed them all down so I was unable to harvest any of them. I think when I put the compost in there was some cantaloupe seeds and so they just started growing. I just left them. It's fine. Okay, so a couple of things I would change. First is I would move these pots over here into the shade a lot sooner than I did. Second would be to increase my watering schedule. I have a lot of drip lines running throughout my garden and I did not adjust those appropriately for the heat and the lack of rain. And lastly would be to water the pots more often. So it's 104 degrees out here. Before I go inside, I wanna ask one last favor. If you have any tips or tricks for what you're doing to mitigate this heat in your garden, please leave a comment below and tell me all about it. I'm sure it'd be beneficial for others to read and see what you're doing. As always, thanks so much for watching and please subscribe.